Hello, welcome back again. This is lesson two. Today we're going to cover flowers and we're going to start with the lotus plant. So I have Grace back today. So she is going to be painting along at the same time. And uh, we have three brushes that I have brought out. Two of them are pretty close in size to each other. And the uh, third brush is much smaller, thinner, and that will give us the fine lines and details that we need. So we're going to start with doing the grass part of the lotus plant. So these are the three brushes that you can see here. I'm going to set those down. Right here like this. And I'm going to have Grace let's go ahead and pick up one of the two brushes. There we go. All right. Um, we also have some practice paper just over on the side so that we can check our brush before we put it to the paper that we're going to actually, actually paint on. I'm going to go ahead and dip this in and get some water on it. And I might just check out to see how much color is still in the brush. So there's not much in there, so we have, which is good. And I can always have this. How are we doing with the brush? Pretty good. All right. So I have some black paint ink here on this tray. This is the most intense. This is more water in this part. So let me check this. Be good. So I want some more intense when I do the uh, leaves or the what's sort of like a blade of grass. We're going to use a particular technique today where we twist the brush to make where it nar narrows and then it's wide again, so you can see how that goes. We're going to be twisting our brush as we do this particular stroke. So I'm going to start. I have some paint on here. Check my nice and dark. I'm going to start at one corner. I'm going to drag my brush in a arch. I'm going to twist and that should narrow it and then widen again and pull it off. And that will make the appearance of where it is not seen as clearly because grass doesn't grow absolutely straight. It, you're going to have little places where you might lose part of it looking from the outside. And we're going to try a few more of those. A little more on there, check my... And it grows in different directions. So sometimes they're shorter. And just like the bamboo leaf, pull the pressure off, it goes to a point. There you go. And then let's try one more where we're going up. Across. We have some pressure. Now I'm going to twist this to thin it out and then widen again and pull off. It's like a bend in your lotus. Okay, let's try a few more of those. I'll start from this side. This up. We do some short ones here to a point. Gradually pull the pressure off. It goes to a point. So let's try another one of these where we're going up. We're going to twist our brush so it narrows and then pressure again and it goes wide. Okay. So let me go ahead and do some more practice on that. Do a few more of these. There 
There you go. That's better. I'm getting there. This one is kind of an odd angle. I'm sure, I'm not sure. It's like something came through and maybe sat down on it, but that's all right. So I'm gonna grab another piece of paper here. I'm running out of room to do this. So I'm gonna start with a new one. It's over here. Do a new one. So I'm going to stick this in here a little bit so I don't want too much water on it because otherwise it puddles. I'm going to start with one long one, curve it like a rainbow or an arch, twist my, and then back wide again with pressure and pull up to a point. More pressure. And then to a point. Okay. So I'm gonna do some more here and then I'll show you how to do the lotus flower with that. But the it grows in a clump. So they you'll see the blades going in different directions. Let's do one more long one. Here, twist the brush and then pressure point, and there we have it. Now you might want to use this smaller one for this. I'm going to show you how to do the stem. So we're going to use the, the smaller brush. It'll give us a finer point. I can use the one I had, but you have almost no pressure on it. Might be easier to use your smaller one when you're first starting. So I'm going to draw a branch. Turn that over to you. Put some blossoms on this branch. So I'm going to put a little bit of water here on this. I'm going to try this out before I put it on my paper. I'm going to take my brush and push it down and pull up. You want to have a lot of water on this end. So I might put a little more water here. And then right at the end, put a drop of the darker on it. And then I'm going to push down, pull up. So it should be lighter. This one is a nice one right here, lighter with a little pool of the dark right at the end. These are, um, I can see, I call them pussy willows. Is there another name for them? Where they grow on this, a stalk, and they. So it's the shape of the brush. Pull it up. It's on both sides. Shape of the brush. Pull up. Shape of the brush. Pull up. Make sure that your brush is pointing towards the stalk. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So that's how it grows on there. Now, to make the lotus flower, you're going to have just simple strokes before I even start on this. You're going to do just simple strokes. They're five, and they're 
third. So you have five goes to a point. And then they have just a dot. So we're going to leave some space. We don't actually want to join these together. Just going to leave a little space. And dots there. So that's a lotus flower. We're going to use our fine one again. And I'll just do tap. And I'm going to take my and we're just going to do it's five. So it's we can have them going down. Up. And five. Strokes. It's like an orchid. There you go. You can try that. Let's put this down so you can see. And see, it has one, two, three, four, five, and this one is where it joins into the stem. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And there, I think. want to start a new one and then we'll add a little interesting friend on the lotus there. So now this is the darkest. This is the wateriest part of it right here. So watery part, dip it, start in the corner. I'm gonna make an arch, press down, it's wide. And as I do that, for a while I'm gonna twist it until it's thin. And then I'm gonna go out wide and off to a point. Let's have them go this way. They grow in a cluster. So you just will want to do something that balances out. They can be longer and shorter. So they go different lengths. Long, twist it, and then back again to widen it to a point. Do you want to try it with this one and see if it works any different? It's okay to switch brushes. Twist and press wide to a point. That one works really well. It probably works better than this one. So 
Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can get this one to work. Now we're going to put a little branch in here to give our some on. to do this. So do you want to go back to the smaller one? Sure. I'll use this one. That's fine. Dark at the end, watery in the middle. Brush points towards the stem. Press down, takes the shape, pull it back up, and it makes a little petal right where it joins. I like that. It looks good. I'm going to do a lotus flower. So I'm going to do a stem up this way. Put right at the end here, some of the water. And now we're going to do just simple brush strokes. As a reminder, I'll take a look at this. Just simple brush strokes. Five in a cluster, and this is where it joins the stem. So right here. One. And then it has um, when it, I would, don't do it if there's a puddle of water there because mm -hmm. it'll just run. Mm -hmm. But um, you can come back and you can do a couple little dots in there because it has a center. Good. All right, now for the fun part, <laughs> oh, we have to have an insect on our on our lotus today. So I'm going to make a grasshopper. Uh, now, there are a couple of different ways to do this. Show you. you can use your brush. It's going to be kind of a rectangular shape. Goes to a point a little bit because the end of the grasshopper is not perfectly squared off. Uh, sometimes you have to come back and just widen this a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Its head it's somewhat of an oval shape. So I'm going to kind of move my brush and make kind of a, that oval shape. I would suggest lighter so you can put eyes on it. You want, might want to take and determine how much color you want in the body and the head so that we can actually see. Around head. Here, a little bit of a line here to make its wings show up. And we have legs here. We have at the nice big press upper leg and down like that. So it's the shape. It's like you're making a letter A, putting a little foot on it. Sometimes it helps my students if I tell them to relate it to something I know they regularly use, like the letter A. So that is how you do the leg. You, you want to practice a little bit more on a spare piece of paper. We're going to do the body, the head, kind of an oval shape. You don't have to have it 
right at connected to the body. I'm going to add a little bit in here, do some lines, and then I'm going to run a line. I'm going to put some darker here so we can see it's there. We go. You can see its little body and where its wing goes in. It has. Okay, how many legs does an insect have? Six. Mm -hmm. Spiders have eight. So it has a couple of little. The big one goes right here like this. It's on the side of the spider. It's the, the side of the grasshopper, not a spider. It's a little wider at this portion. Then it gets a little narrower as it goes down past that joint. Oh, and we cannot forget to make really nice long antenna. <laughs> Make it creepy. There's his eyes. All right, when you think you have a pretty good idea how to do this, and this leg, you're probably not going to see all of it, but you might see part of it go up. It might come down behind here, and you might see an another part of it from behind. So you might want to do that too. So, because you're only going to see part of it. The other part's hidden. Okay, shall we? Do we have enough in here for you to go? Shall we put some more black there? This just never works the way it's supposed to. Who doesn't like grasshoppers, right? Yeah. I don't like them on my plants when they're eating my vegetables, my leaves. I don't like that. Okay, so on here, we just can start with the body. So the head. This one needs a little more water and a little less color. A little bit too forward with it. Now I'm going to pull a little bit more down here for the body. I'm going to get a little dark on here, so I'm going to use this thinner one. Well, I have it. I'm going to do the long antenna. I'm going to do his great big old leg. And this one is going to be one of the legs in the front. And sometimes my younger students don't like the idea that you can't see all four, or in this case, six legs on something, but the other half of it's hidden. <laughs> so you don't have to draw all of them showing. Nice job. And that's... That's it for today. So any particular questions, things that you're having trouble with it? Maybe I can. Uh, OK, that's yeah, that's mostly a, a practice thing. So when you are doing this down, you need to turn and move it at the same time, which gets really complicated and then it's practice. Yeah. But you just need to make sure you're turning and it'll keep it in a point. If it spreads, it's not going to come out as nice as 
if you can turn it and keep it to a point. So that'll, this is practice. Practice, practice, practice. My teacher told me that it was years before they let her move beyond bamboo. She started when she was quite young and maybe there's a reason for that, but she was a long time studying just to get to this point. Okay. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. And just remember to keep practicing. The more you practice, the better you get at something. Doesn't matter what it is. Even art counts. Bye. Bye. <laughs>